Welcome once again to the JLo Artist YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me on this artistic adventure. Today we'll be working with ink, pen and ink. So have your kneaded eraser, a number two or an HB pencil, candy, and any type of ink that you would like to use. But make sure that it's archival, that it's permanent, that it's black, and a smooth ink. And let's start doing some ink drawing. When you're drawing with ink, there's you can draw direct with ink if you want. Depends on how comfortable you are. I'm taking for granted that you're not very comfortable with this. So we're going to start out with our number two pencil. And look at your object and just say, okay, where does it go? You can say, well, I want the top of it to be like off to the left here just a little bit right there. You can make yourself a little triangle if you want. You can, In fact, you can even just say, I, I want my whole castle thing to be right here. Leave yourself enough room down there for the water because I'm going to show you a technique of drawing all those reflections and everything with the, the ink. I'm going to just start with this uh, this little tower, this little ruined tower. And there's kind of um, trees and things on it, so I'm just going to kind of go in there. It's slightly rounded. Remember, the farther you get from your vanishing point, if this is your, your eye level line, the farther you get away, the more curved it becomes. If this was really tall, it would be very curved. And you can see those curves in the tower beyond. It's kind of curved. So I'm just going to come up just, just simple shapes. Don't worry too much. It's not perfect. Nothing's perfect. And just like everything else, you kind of adjust it. You just kind of keep going until it's the way you want it. Don't do details, just the simple shapes. Just get all the information you need. And the trees, if you wanted to put in the trees, just do them like little puffy clouds or something. Just say, okay, there's trees over there. Now remember, because we're drawing with the side of our pencil, everything here is gets erased. Because we're doing ink, you, you don't want to see your pencil. So that's why you draw with the side of your pencil. Hopefully you've been practicing that. Now hopefully as we do projects and you do practice that, that it'll feel more natural. If you wanted to throw in like windows and things like that, you could block those in. Just little rectangles and just say, well, okay, there's a little rectangle that's right there. Little one up there. But for the most part, that's all you need. All you need is to compose it to get it out where it goes look at parts of this that look like it blends into the background little edges like right up in here this roof line here it's almost so light that it blends into the background so th that's something you can think to yourself oh i'm not going to throw all that line in i'm going to leave it out maybe over here leave some of that out um maybe along this little edge where this white area goes here you want to leave that out so Remember, just in the back of your mind, there's a lot of stuff that we're not going to draw in here. We don't have to draw it all. So I'm going to come in, and from, I'm going to start with the top and work my way down. That seems to work for me. So I'm going to start with the little weather vane that's up there. I'm just going to throw this little weather vane in with a little half moon, a couple little dots and dashes, a little line there, and that's it. I don't... I don't it doesn't matter what that is. Then you've got your little triangular shape. And if you're thinking to yourself, I'm not sure that that's quite right. You want to draw it in with your pencil first. You're more than welcome to. 
just remember to do it lightly because we're going to erase it. And I'm going to do the eave underneath that, uh, that little cone roof. I'm going to start with a little edge there. There's a couple little lines there. It, remember, it's, it's uh, not round. I may have drawn it round to begin with. So I'm just going to use two double little lines there. That's the eave. That's the dark area underneath. And then you've got these little triangles that go up. You can, if you want to, put a couple little lines in there. Don't complete them. But just to guide yourself to say, this is where I want some of that darkness to go. And then just hatch through it. I'm just going to turn my wrist around. I'm going to hatch through that. Hatch, 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 hatch. All the way down. And that's it. The other side, right over here, there is a thin, thin little edge. So I'm going to hatch through that. Hatch, 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 hatch. It's thinner up at the top, thicker at the bottom. And you leave a little bit of a light edge between the two. If you wanted to do that one on this side, you could, but use less line. So I'm just going to hatch through that. Less line. Just a couple little hatchy lines. And maybe a tiny little edge here with little dots and dashes. Just a couple right there. And that's it. That's your roof. Piece of cake. If you get rid of your graphite, which I will, that's all there is to it. Now I'm going to do the same thing all the way down. I can see that edge. And again, if you think to yourself, I need a guideline, Draw a very thin, light, light pencil line. You can do that if you'd like to just guide yourself there. That's just a guideline. But remember, we've got to erase that. So if you wanted to, you could add a little pencil line there just to show where it is. And then, again, little hatched lines, dots, dashes, whatever you need. Don't draw a single line all the way down through there couple little hatched lines. I'm going to do the same thing over here, hatched lines. These are darker, so they're going to be closer together. I just start and stop where my pencil lines were. And I'm barely touching the paper, too. You don't, you don't have to do too much there. And then this other side, it's a little darker, so my lines are going to be a little closer together. And I also want to go the direction that the edge is. That's, that's called contouring. So I'm just contouring. You can add little dots and dashes to just smooth it out. There's a little um, chimney that's right there. I'm going to throw that in. Do the same thing down the edge of the chimney. Just little dots and dashes, just little hatched lines all the way down. Because it's a shadow. And you don't know where to start or stop. That I'm just going to stop right there. And next to that, this shadow continues on. Again, if you wanted to make a little line there to just guide yourself down through, you're more than welcome to do that. I'm just going to hatch through it. And I can always come back in and add more. If I had drawn a line there, that line would, would be more permanent. And if I tried to move it one way or another, it would look silly. This way, if, even if I wanted to bring it clear out here, I still could. Now I'm just going to continue that on. Just kind of refine that little edge. Some little dashes. You can use dots if you want, but I'm just refining that little edge. There at the bottom, it's kind of light, so I'm going to use less line there. Maybe a couple little dots or dashes. And that chimney kind of comes down and curves, so I'm just going to put that in there. 
it's a rectangle so i'm just gonna do this little rectangle this other side there's a tiny little edge there that you can see i'm gonna throw this in here it's a triangle but it's very thin and as i come up just dots one dot up there and that's all i need so if i got rid of my graphite which i'm going to do here look how i've lost that whole edge it's not even there and that's okay nothing wrong with that if i decide i need more of that edge in there i could put a little dot or a dash in there but just leave it out when in doubt leave it out there's a little triangle on the other side of that chimney that's right there. Here's that other little tower. I'm going to just do a little arch. That's the underneath eave part. Little triangle coming up there with dots and dashes. Little triangle coming down the side there. So I start out thin and I get thicker or wider as I come down. Another one on the other side, little triangle. And again, you can use little dots and dashes. And if you want to put that little spire there, that little spire is kind of light and thin. You don't even have to attach it. You can just like do these little scribbly lines there and then couple little things hanging out up there and it looks like it's attached but it isn't it's just kind of floating out there if that bothers you add a little dot or a dash to it whatever you need a couple little dots and dashes and you got it that's the roof now we can always come back into this later on and add more which we probably will need to because that chimney is quite dark. So maybe I'm going to come back in and darken it up just a little bit. Closer your line, closer your dot, the darker the value. So you can always darken it later on. But for now, let's keep going. We can come back into it. That roof, as it kind of comes down and curves, that little curve right there is lost. I'm just going to let it stay lost. I'm going to add this curve right there. There's a little arch. That's the inside of that eave as it comes down and turns around your building. And I'm going to thicken it up towards the center. And then as it comes around, it gets thinner and then disappears right there. And I'm just going to leave that broken. Just leave that edge there. Again, later on, I can come back into it if we need to. There are some little supports that come up underneath the roof. You can sort of see them like little edges. Just put those in as dots and dashes. A little dot there, a little dash there. Here's a little support. Another little dot and dash. There's another one right there. Another one right there. Another one right there right there voila that's about it now the fun part windows i'm going to show you how to do simple simple windows again if you if you think oh i need that window exactly where it goes take your pencil and you can come into it and go okay there's a little rectangle it goes about right right there I'm going to throw that little window in, just that little rectangle. And if you want to, you can separate it into a little window. Or you can direct drive. Notice the shadow right here. It's a 7 right there. Sometimes they're L's, sometimes they're 7's, depending on how the what angle you are to the window. But if you think of those like little 7, 7-7 seven, seven right there, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to come in, I'm just going to do a little 7 seven there's another little seven and another little seven and you can even 
put a double line there on that edge and a double line on the top. Now, if you think about it, you could probably just leave them like that, and that's, that's a pretty good window. But you think, well, they're darker than the rest of it. Sometimes, if the light is hitting the glass just right, it's lighter. Sometimes it's darker. In this case, it's darker. So I'm going to just hatch through it. And in the, in the rectangle shape, hatch, hatch, hatch. Leave a little space for the windowsill. And you put a little dot in the corner if you want. All your windows are going to be pretty similar to that. Either little sevens or L's or... And sometimes if the window is on the left, it's going to be a seven. If it's on the right, the sevens are going to be backwards. Like Russian sevens. I don't know. Do Russians write their sevens backwards? I don't know either. <laughs> so just below it's another window. Rather than draw it in with my pencil, I'm just going to do a little seven. Right there. You can put a little dot in that corner if you want to, to just show you where that where that corner is and then hatch through it hatch 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 we've got that light edge that's there and it's more darker on this side than it is on this side so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go through and with dots i'm just going to show where that edge is little dots here's the edge of that light And then there's a, there's a little stripe that's underneath it. I'm going to do that one without drawing a line. I'm just going to do the edge. And that all that does is just kind of help me to see where that uh, where that little white stripe is. Now I'm going to texture it. And I'm just going to do it back and forth. And I'm not going to do lines, but I'm going to do little squiggly little, I don't know what they're called. There are lines, but there's just squigglies. Less on the outside. So less right here. And as I get towards the dark, I'm going to do more. Okay, so less on the outside, more towards this side. And they're just little dots and dashes. In fact, sometimes what I'll do is it's like I'm drawing a line, but I kind of touch the paper and then not touch the paper. Kind of shake a little bit. So that's kind of what I'm going to do all the way through. Here's the edge here. And I can see where it's darker up in there. Maybe I can even mark that by these little edges like this and again if you wanted to you could put you could use your pencil to figure out where that edge is if you want to or you could just draw it direct you can use little dots to clean it up I'm just going to take and put little dots and dashes all the way through there more towards the shadow side and that's it that's your that's your texture that's your brick and i'm not going to draw an edge where that the edge of that wall is there's not going to be a line there I'm just going to leave it out This takes a little bit of practice. I'm just barely, barely, barely touching my paper. Not hardly even pressing it down against the desk. Just barely touch it. And it gives you this very light, soft little edge.
So again, you've got more line towards inside. And if you look at it now and you think, oh, it's even darker than that, it's easy. Just go back in and add more. A couple little dots and dashes. That'll keep that texture going as well as darken in that area. And if you think, well, the white's not white there, maybe I need some texture in there. Sure. You can add some hatched lines or some dots. Sometimes a dot makes a huge difference. Just add a few little dots or some little hatched lines. And that's really the technique we're going to use. I'm going to I'm going to shut up for a minute and just go ahead and you guys draw using that same technique. And remember, when in doubt, leave it out. You can always come back into it later. Um, there's a little, little roof that kind of comes off the side here. I'm just going to add that in there real quick. And again, I don't know what I'm drawing. I'm just doing shapes of dark and light. And when I'm all done, whatever that thing is should come through should look at it and go, oh, I get it. That's a little part of that building that's coming out. They're just shapes of dark and light. Don't think of them as a building. There's a flagpole or something that's in front of it right there. I'm going to ignore that. It looks kind of goofy. There's a little darkness there. Just put it in with some hatched line or dots or dashes, whatever you feel like you need. I'm going to go ahead and do that tower now on the other side too. And if you want to, again, you can use your pencil and define it just lightly. But I'm just going to, not that big of a deal. I'm just going to go through and just dots and dashes. Now, you may want to use contour line. Contour is where your lines kind of mimic the edges or they go along the edges, the surface of it. So as I go through this little rounded thing, instead of going straight back and forth, I'm going to arch this. Just give it a little arch. So arch. Back and forth. And that'll help that surface to feel round. And just a couple little dots and dashes, and you got it. And that texture is really fairly simple to get. And any shapes of shadows that you see, just throw in those shapes of those shadows. The object will come through. Now, one thing that's going to define part of this edge is those trees behind it. So I'm going to allow those trees to do that. I'm going to show you how to do trees while we're here. Trees are another thing that is fairly easy to do. Please don't think of trees as difficult. There's that other window. What an easy way to do windows. 
this gig. So I'm going to do these trees. Now, first of all, when you're doing trees, um, think of them like, um, like M's and U's. So here's a little piece of tracing paper. Anything on the top is going to be an M, like this, or M's, little, little bumps. Anything below is going to be a U, like this. And all you want to do are the shadowy areas. So I'm looking at my tree over here. I'm going to say, oh, okay, I see these little, these little branches just hanging up there, just a couple little dots and dashes and little M's, little tiny ones. Those are those upper limbs. And then as it comes down, you're going to do little more M's. And, and again, just skip little areas. If it's really light, just leave it out. If it's dark, just throw more of it in there. So I'm looking at the shadows of the tree. Not trying, trying to draw the tree exactly, but trying to give it some inspiration. It's little M's, U's. They're going in different shapes or different directions. I sometimes will fan as I go through. Sometimes I'll do it this way, like this, up and down. So give it a little fan because your trees are going to grow that way. So just little fans kind of, kind of like that, okay? And don't be afraid to leave areas out. If there is a huge area that's dark, like, there, like this section right here is fairly dark, I can go through and I can hatch through it first, like that, and then go in and do some little textures. Because I know that it's going to be dark. But if it's fairly light, just leave it out. You can always come in and add more later on. So here's some more. And they're just hanging out. Don't be afraid to not attach them to anything. Just have them just kind of hanging out up there. If you can see branches in the tree, you can draw those branches in. Like down here below, I can see some branches. I could go in and do a couple little lines like this and draw a few branches in. But then the rest of it's done with those little M's and U's. And those little M's and U's are going to define the edge of this building. So as I go through, I just do the branches until it hits the edge of the building and then stop. And different trees are a little different. If you're doing pine trees, it's kind of the same idea, but you're using more little strokes, little zigzaggy strokes than M's and U's. So down here below, the, the tree does define the edge of that part of the building. So I'm just going to keep that going. But then it gets really light below that. And there's some little trees that kind of come up in there. I'm just going to do some little M's and U's just kind of hanging out up there. Little spaces here and there. And that's really your tree there, too. And when we do, uh, we'll do a little bit of negative space in between. But that's it. Is that not the easiest tree you've ever drawn? So I still have some of this building to do. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So again, little dots and dashes. This one is actually lighter down here than it is up here. So you just need less. Less than what you've got up above. And you got it. A couple little dots and dashes and that's easy. 
trees do take a while to do. So um, what I do sometimes is I'll define the tree a little bit, just say this is where it goes. If I have time, I'll come back into it. But where we only have a little over an hour to work, um, you know, I want to get this almost done. So the trees are not as important as other things. So I might just kind of come up here and define the tree a little bit. Just say this is where it goes. And then just leave it hanging out up there. Nobody cares if it's up there. I mean, that still looks like tree. So it's okay. You can, you can just let it go. Now, one of my fun things that I really enjoy doing are these little supports. They're kind of an architectural motif that is the support underneath. Here's a good way to do this. You can take your pencil and just very lightly put little lines there. And those are just going to tell you where the bumps are because you want them all to kind of line up. So if you, if you draw a little line there for your bumps, and then you just come through with your pen, and you just make a little dark edge there, a little dark edge here, a little dark edge there. And they're thinner on the outside, thicker on the inside. So right here, your little dark edges are going to be just little spots, little dots, if you will. But as, as you get inside, they get a little bit bigger, a little broader, a little, little wider. And they connect a little bit more. So they're thin on the outside, and as they come through, they get a little thicker, a little broader. There's even a little window right there. So maybe I'll put that in there as a shadow. And below that, it's another window. Start out with my seven, put in my dot, and then hatch through it. It's a little rectangle. They are in shadow, so if you wanted to shadow some of those, you could just with like little lines or hatched lines through there. Just shadow those out a little bit. But that There's a little lighter brick around this window. So I'm just going to denote that with little dots and dashes. Because everything else has got to have a little bit of value to it. I don't know what this is. This seems like a little recess or something right there. I don't know what it is. But it's a rectangle, and it's got shadow in it, so I'm just going to shadow it. There's times when I'll be drawing, and uh, I have no idea what I'm drawing. I'm just mimicking the shapes of dark and light. And then it hits me. Oh, I know what that is. That brick that's over there is going to be, um, it's a little darker over here. So I'm just going to use a little bit more dot, a little more dash. And then as it turns and it gets light over here. In fact, the bottom part is lighter than any of the top. So you just use less line. There's a little shadow across this wall. Um, you can, if you wanted to, take your pencil and kind of denote the shadow. But really all it is is just hatch through it in the shape that shadow is. And 
There's your shadow. You can always go back into it and add more if you need to. There's some vines growing up on there. Those are also those little M's and U's. And again, just doing this in the darks that you see. And then leave the rest out. What do you think about the stairway? You want to put in the stairway or leave it out? Okay. Yeah, I'd leave it out too. It's kind of too modern for us. They probably had a little tower there and the tower fell down. So I'm going to leave it out. Where that part of the wall is, where it's kind of crumbling and falling apart, um, you're going to just do some random line. And again, just look at the darks and you just kind of try to do the darks. Don't have to attach everything. Just leave it out. Just little scribbly, random kind of, there's your, there's your decaying wall. Piece of cake. Just little scribble, scribble, scribble back and forth. Dots and dashes, whatever you feel like you need. Of course, there's plants growing out of that. You may want to do a few little, little plants coming off of there. This roof is now too light as I look back into it. I'm just going to throw a little bit of line in there just to darken it in just a little bit. A couple little light, light, light little lines. The tower, that old tower that's falling apart. Start with the shadow. When you're looking at the rock, too, um, remember you don't have to draw every little rock. You want it to look like rock. You just give your viewer enough information. So what I'm going to do, let me define this edge here. And it's defined by the trees, the foliage, whatever is behind it. Your rock, if you think about your rock like little shadows, the shadows are always underneath the rock. The rock's lighter on the top, darker on the bottom. So I'm just going to throw in some little rocks by these little zigzaggy lines. I'm just going to throw a few here and there, just wherever I see it dark. It doesn't have to be where you see it exactly. They're close. And then dots and dashes. And the rest of it you just leave out. You can also do meandering lines. Uh, let me let me go in. I'm going to zoom into here so you can see what I'm doing and do some meandering lines. Meandering lines are exactly what they sound. They kind of go back and forth. I'm just barely going to touch the surface. I'm just going to go back and forth. Back and forth. Little meandering lines. So you can use little dots. You can use dashes. You can say, well, this rock is a little darker over here. So you can hatch through that rock a little bit. This is also a great way to do brick. Just little meandering lines back and forth. Some could be kind of rounded because these little rocks, they're all different shapes. Okay, that's one way to do it. The other way are just these little scribbly lines here and there. Just say, this is a rock. There's a few little dots and dashes. And where it's darker, you do more. In fact, you could even come through and if you wanted to, hatch all the way through it like this. Do a little hatch through it. And then do the little rocks. Back and forth. Little meandering. Just back and forth. Don't be afraid to skip it. It doesn't have to be attached to anything. Just back and forth. 
It's the texture. That's what you're trying to get. This little dark space right there is a cannon port. This uh, this little turm, this little turret here was a cannon turret. They'd put a cannon in there so if boats tried to get into it, they could shoot them. So that's what that little dark half moon shape is. Little arch is what it is. Less towards the outside where it's lighter. More towards the shadow. And it's kind of random. Just little dots and dashes. Wherever you see darkness, just throw that in as little, little hatched lines. You guys ready for the water? So here's here's the water. Look how easy this is going to be. First of all, look at your darkest areas. And if you wanted to, you could take your pencil and you could come out and say, okay, here's a dark area here. There's a dark area over here. You know, there's a window over here. You could throw that in. The window over here. Here's that little dark edge right there. Okay. Water is very level. And so when you draw water, make sure that your, uh, your line is going horizontally, back and forth. And you're going to just do very similar to what meandering is up here, but just very smooth, back and forth. And you're going to concentrate on the darkest areas. So, for example, I'm going to come back and forth like this. I'm just going to kind of concentrate on those little dark areas. Back and forth. Back and forth. And you go ahead and break your edge there. I mean, it's they could just be kind of floating. Just make sure that they're very horizontal. Very horizontal. Back and forth. Long and short. They don't have to be exact. That little dark edge, the, the reflection of this little cannon port, we do the same thing, just back and forth. Along the edge of the building, it's very dark. It's where the water is collected. You get mineral deposits. It's going to be dark there, so just back and forth. And as it comes out, as it comes closer to you, your line should be a little wider, a little broader, a little less. So as you come out closer to you, a little broader, a little wider. Just remember your water is very horizontal. Too often times people start doing this, and, and you can't do that with water unless you're looking straight down on it. If you're looking across it, it has to be very horizontal, back and forth. So where this window is, I just come opposite down in the water and do the same thing back and forth, but just concentrate on those little dark edges, those little dark areas. One thing you want to do is make sure that all your graphite's gone. One of the last things you do is get rid of all your graphite. Here's my trees, just hanging out up there. Remember, you don't even have to have them attached to anything. 
Everybody understands their trees. If you've got space for those vines that are hanging over the edge, just do the shadowy parts, little little U's and M's, and just leave the rest of it just kind of hanging out there. You can even do shadows underneath it if you want, like this. Everybody understands what that is. Again, don't be afraid to leave things out. Look how much water I've left out. All you do is the dark areas. The light areas, just let them go. They'll take care of themselves. Don't forget your signature. The last part of your, your drawing needs to be your signature. And it needs to be someplace nice. Don't, don't put it on the edge. Bring it up a little bit into the corner. Good place for it would be either right down here, maybe even up here in the wall or over here. Hopefully you had a fun experience today and learned something maybe and even tried something that you've never done before. And hopefully somewhere along the way it's made your life a little bit better because art makes life better. <laughs>